Welcome to TV Recaps. Today I will be recapping a psychological horror. A group of girls survived a horrific plane crash and spent 19 months stranded in the wilderness. Years later, a mysterious symbol reappears in their lives, reminding them of their violent and tragic past. Before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for our channel. Please sit tight and enjoy the recap of the TV show, Yellow Jackets, Season 1. Oh, and of course, spoilers ahead. The story begins with the Yellow Jackets, a high school girls soccer team, boarding a private flight to Seattle to participate in the 1996 National Tournament. On board the plane are Bill, the head coach, his two sons, Travis and Javi, Ben, the assistant coach, Misty, the equipment manager, Jackie, the team captain, and the rest of the team, Shauna, Natalie, Taya Saw, Van, Lottie, and Laura. Unfortunately, mid-flight, the plane crashes, killing the head coach and the pilots, and leaving the survivors stranded in the middle of nowhere. After the crash, Misty uses her knowledge of first aid to help the injured. She saves the life of Ben by amputating and cauterizing his mangled leg. Misty, usually ignored by the team, revels in the newfound appreciation from her teammates. She finds the plane's emergency transmitter but, for completely selfish reasons, destroys it to keep the team stranded. Three days later, rations are running low. Tayusa convinces the group to hike towards a nearby lake to find more food and water. At the lake, they find an abandoned cabin with a dead body in the attic and also a rifle with ammo. After a few rounds of shooting practice, Natalie and Travis emerge as the best shooters and are chosen as hunters for the group. They bond during their hunting trips and develop romantic feelings for each other over time. Later, the girls' menstrual cycle syncs up and experience their period at the same time, all except for Shauna. Tayusa notices Shauna faking her period and confronts her. She confesses that she is pregnant with Jackie's boyfriend Jeff's baby. Meanwhile, Lottie, who was diagnosed with schizophrenia as a child, needs to take medication to stay sane. Her supply eventually runs out and she starts having hallucinations of a deer with bloody antlers. Later, Natalie and Travis bring back a diseased deer with the same bloody antlers. Laura, a deeply religious Christian, concludes that Lottie is having premonitions. The group holds a seance in the attic and places candles on strange symbols already carved into the floor. Halfway through, Lottie appears to be possessed. You must smell blood. <laughs> or else. Or else what, Lottie? 25 years later, Shauna is now married to Jeff and has a teenage daughter. Tayusa is running for state senator. Misty is employed as a geriatric nurse. And Natalie is a recovering addict who has just completed rehab. After being stranded in the wilderness for 19 months, several members of the Yellow Jackets manage to survive. However, the specific details of how they survived have never been revealed. Shauna is approached by Jessica, a journalist, who is willing to pay generously to publish the full story. She turns her down. Unbeknownst to Shauna, Jessica is actually hired by Tayusa to find out if the other survivors might leak their secret and jeopardize her political campaign. For some time now, Shauna has been struggling to rekindle the passion in her marriage. She suspects Jeff is cheating on her and follows him to a hotel, where she sees him with another woman. Out of spite, Shauna sleeps with Adam, a stranger she met by chance during a car accident. Meanwhile, Natalie receives a postcard with the same symbol found in the cabin attic years ago. She confronts Misty at gunpoint, thinking she is the one who sent the card. However, Misty also received the same postcard. They suspect all survivors might have received it and embark on a road trip to find Travis. Sadly, they find his dead body at a ranch, where he works, leaving Natalie devastated. Based on a message left by Travis, they speculate that he was murdered. Natalie meets with Kevin, her high school friend who is also a detective, and uses his affection for her to acquire information on Travis's death. Natalie and Misty discover that the candle wax on the ground can be traced to form the strange symbol. Natalie meets with Shauna and Tayusa in her motel room and tells them what she has learned. Surprisingly, both Shauna and Tayusa received a blackmail for $50,000 in the postcard, but not Shauna. They devise a plan to catch the culprit by hiding a GPS tracker in the cache but keeps Misty in the dark as they suspect she could be involved. Unbeknownst to the group, Misty has planted a hidden camera in the room and is secretly spying on them. Tayusa's political opponent airs a campaign ad insinuating she is a cannibal who ate her friends to survive. Later, she finds the word spill painted on her front door and confronts Sammy, 
her son, after discovering red paint in his room. He denies doing so and blames it on the lady in the tree. Simone, Taiyasa's wife, explains that her absence in Sammy's life is the reason for his outbursts. With her family falling apart, Taiyasa decides to drop out of the Senate race. However, she changes her mind at the last second, denounces the attacks of her opponents, and frames them for the word painted on her door. Late at night, Taiyasa wakes up from a fugue state next to a tree and realizes her son was talking about her. Due to the stress from her campaign, she is sleepwalking again. Flashback 25 years ago. Winter is approaching. The group can no longer find animals to hunt and begin to starve. Taiyasa, Van, and Misty embark on an expedition to find a way out of the wilderness. Before they depart, Lottie hands Van a lucky charm to keep her safe. Meanwhile, Shauna admits to Jackie that she is pregnant but lies about who the father is. After reading Shauna's diary, Jackie discovers that she has been sleeping with Jeff behind her back and is devastated. Later, Travis finds out from Jackie that Natalie's ex-boyfriend is Bobby, someone who bullied him in high school, and confronts her. They have a huge fight which ends their relationship. Out in the woods, Taiyasa takes first watch and stays awake as lookout for the group. She falls asleep and, unexpectedly, wakes up on top of a tree, wearing Van's lucky charm and holding a flare gun. The group is attacked by a pack of wolves. Taiyasa fights and kills the wolf attacking Van. Unfortunately, she has already sustained severe facial injuries. Van is rescued and brought back to the cabin to get stitches for her face. Next morning, Laura, believing she has received a sign from God, announces she will be flying the propeller aircraft, found abandoned in the woods, out of the wilderness to look for help. Laura has been studying the flight manual for weeks to learn how to fly it. Upon ascent, however, it explodes, shattering the group's last hope for salvation. The group decides to have one last celebration before they die. Misty has had a crush on Ben, the assistant coach, for a long time and plans to drug him with hallucinogenic mushrooms. The cook adds the mushrooms, meant only for Ben, to the broth, thinking they are ordinary ones. Van and Tayusa arrive at the party as a couple and receives applause from everyone. The entire group, except Jackie, eats the broth and start to experience intense hallucinations. Misty pounces on Ben and confesses her love for him, but he pushes her off. Ben explains that he is gay, much to her disappointment. Jackie and Travis have sex in the cabin attic despite Travis still having feelings for Natalie. The rest of the group confront them at the cabin. They start imagining Travis as a stag and chase after him as he runs out into the woods. After catching him, Lottie orders Shauna to slit his throat. Natalie arrives just in time to stop her. Next morning, the hallucinations wear off and they return to the cabin. Out of nowhere, a bear emerges from the bush. Lottie calmly walks in front of the bear and kills her. Everyone stares in amazement. During mealtime, Jackie chastises the group for trying to kill Travis. She gets into a heated argument with Shauna and reveals that the baby's father is Jeff. Angry, Jackie decides to sleep outside. Natalie finds Travis in the woods looking for Habby who has been missing since last night. Travis confesses his love for Natalie and hugs her. Next day, Shauna wakes up to see the whole area covered in snow and finds out Jackie has frozen to death. She breaks down sobbing. In the present, Natalie, Shauna, and Taisa have dropped off the money and is monitoring the tracker for movement. After spotting the blackmailer, the group gives chase. The blackmailer falls into a box of glitter during the pursuit before getting away. Meanwhile, Misty has drugged and kidnapped Jessica, believing she is the blackmailer. Upon questioning, Jessica reveals she was hired by Taisa to look into the rest of the group. Natalie, to numb the pain of losing Travis, resorts to drugs. Misty arrives just in time to stop her from relapsing, revealing the hidden camera in the process. She tells Natalie that someone emptied Travis' bank account after he died. To find out who, Natalie contacts Susie, a former sponsor who works at a bank. Back home, Shauna spends the night with Adam in her own bed. She discovers later that her journals, documenting her time in the wilderness, are missing and finds glitter in her closet. Shauna suspects Adam took them and confronts him. After confirming he is digging into her past, she kills him. Shauna returns home and to her surprise, finds the journals back in the safe. She questions Jeff, who also has access to the safe, and he admits that he is the blackmailer. Jeff found out about their secret through Shauna's journals and blackmailed her friends because his furniture store is not doing well. The woman at the hotel was a lone shark, not his mistress. Shauna confesses to him that she killed Adam and they decide to frame him as the blackmailer instead. 
she convinces Natalie and Taya saw that Adam was the blackmailer and they enlist Misty's help to dispose of the body. In a stunning upset, Taya so wins the Senate race. Simone, while looking for stuff in the basement, discovers a hidden cell with her missing dog's head and a human heart. Horrified, she screams. Misty releases Jessica from her basement but secretly poisons her cigarettes with fentanyl. Natalie is convinced that Travis committed suicide and is ready to end her own life. Before Natalie could pull the trigger, a mysterious group kidnaps her. Hey, you've reached Natalie. You know what to do. I dug into Travis's bank account and found out who emptied it. I think someone's following me. Who the fuck is Lottie Matthews? The end. Please stay tuned for the next TV recap. Comment below on what you liked or disliked about our video. Thank you for watching.